Eric Tobin, good evening, everyone. We are, Baruch Hashem, have, uh, have the Zuchus to start Sefer Bereshis with the Zera Shimshon. And we are in Os Zion, the section seven, uh, on Dap Nun Aleph in the Sefer, Parshas Bereshis. Uh, the Zera Shimshon is going to open uh, with a very famous Pasuk from, all the Pasukim and Bereshis are famous, but a well-known Pasuk in uh, Parak Aleph, Pasuk, uh, let's see here, Pasuk uh, Vav, and it says as follows, Vayomer Elohim, and Hashem said, Na'ase Odom b'tzalmenu kidmuseinu, let us make man in our image and in our form, the year do b'digas hayom, and he will rule over uh, the the uh, fish of the sea, uv'ov ha'shamayim, and the birds in the shamayim, uv'avahema, and in the animals, over the animals, uv'chol ha'aretz, and over all the land, and all of the crawly things that creep on the on the land. So Zerah is going to focus on the words Naase Adam, let us make man. He begins as follows again, Os Zion. Medrash Yalkut, the Medrash Yalkut Shimoni, Al Pasuk Naase Adam. On this Pasuk that we just read, where Hashem says, Let us make Adam, let us make man. Rabbi Shmuel bar Nachmeni, b'shem Rabbi Yonason Omer. Rabbi Shmuel, the son of Nachmeni, said in the name of Rabbi Yonason, b'shar shehaya Moshe kosev ha-Torah, at the time that Moshe was writing the Torah, meaning the time that Hashem is dictating the Torah to Moshe, and he's writing it down, haya kosev masa kol yom v'yom. He was writing down the things that happened on each day. So he's starting from Bereshis, and he's writing down taking dictation from Hashem and writing down the events of each of the days of Bereshis. Kivan shehigia lepasuk na'ase adam, when Moshe Rabbeinu reached the pasuk where Hashem said to him uh, to write, we will make man or let us make man, Omar lefanov, Moshe said to Hashem, Ribona Shalola, master of the universe, lama ata nosein pischon pela apikorsim, why are you giving an opening to the apikorsim, to the to the heretics, meaning that the central uh, teaching of the Torah is monotheism, of the belief in one God, of the belief in Hashem. And here Hashem is using the word, telling Moshe to write the word na'ase in the plural. Let us make man. And this opens the door to people who 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 want to claim that there's more than one deity. Omar Le, Hashem said to Moshe, Kosu. Write it down just this way, Vaharotse Litos Yite. And the, a person who wants to make a mistake will make a mistake. Adkan Lishono, this is uh, a quote from the Medras Yalkut Shimon. Zerashim Shon comments, Vuhutamua, and this is very hard to understand. The Kushyas Moshe, he Kushya Chazaka. Because the question that Moshe asked to Hashem is a very strong question. Moshe's question to Hashem, how can I say, how can I write in the Torah, na'ase adam, in the plural, that we will make man, that's a very strong question. The tshuvas ha-kadosh baruchu temua. And the response of Hashem is hard to understand, meaning uh, Hashem doesn't explain why exactly uh, this is, uh, he, he felt this was necessary and wanted Moshe to write this. He just said, write it, and whoever makes a mistake makes a mistake. And that's, and that's, uh, not an easy answer to understand. Second paragraph. V'yesh lomar, she-moshe ha-yesover, she-machmas pasuk zeh, yishabchu b'nei odom l'minus. We can say that Moshe thought that because of this pasuk, because Hashem said, na'ase odom, let us make man, then people would change their viewpoints and become heretics. Lomar, and to say, that there is more than one God, God forbid, people would, Moshe thought, if people see that God said, Nasa, we will make, immediately they will think, oh, we means there's more than one God, so there must be, there must be more than one God, the HaKadosh Baruch Hu heishid lo, and so Hashem responded to him, it's impossible, Hashem said, that because of the phrasing of this pasuk, people would actually become her heretics. Because the answer to this question 
is right next to it because the Torah clearly says, Vayivra Elohim es ha'adam b'tzalmo. Right after Hashem said, Na'ase Adam, the Torah states, what did Hashem do? Vayivra Elohim, in the singular. Hashem created man in his image, also in the singular. So even though in this Pasuk, it used the plural and it said, Na'ase Adam, immediately after that, it referred to the creation of Hashem, a creation of man, of man uh, uh, by Hashem singularly. And so therefore, a person should be able to see that, that it's not a case of, uh, of more than one God, Chas Vashon. And it's also written in Sefer Devarim, Lemin Hayom Asher Bora Elohim Adam Al Ha'aretz. From the time, from the day that Hashem created man on the earth, also singular. In the other places in the Torah, when it talks about Hashem creating man, it uses the singular form. So it's clear, of course, that there's only one God, and the only and this uh, one God created mankind. And so there's no real reason for a person to to suddenly change his uh, his whole philosophy, his whole theology, and believe, God forbid, that there's more than one God. And because of this, because Hashem was not concerned about this problem that Moshe raised, he wanted Moshe to write this Naaseh, to teach the ethical lesson, that a great person should never be embarrassed or feel humbled, little eitza min hakaton mimen to take advice from someone smaller, someone less important, someone uh, who's less of a personage. Uh, he should never be embarrassed to come right out and ask their opinions and ask their viewpoints. And that's the lesson that Hashem wanted to teach with the words Na'ase Adam. If Hashem could use Na'ase Adam, let us make man ki'ilu kaviyochel, as if he's asking advice and, and, and getting other people to join in with his decision, then certainly it's a lesson to us that uh, anytime we make an important decision, we should consult with other people and we should never feel that that's below our stature to do so. If Hashem could do so, how could it be below our stature to consult with others and to include them uh, and their advice in our, de in our, in our decisions? Omnum, however, However, Hashem understood that Moshe's concern could apply to someone who already had her heretical thoughts. That his supposed logic and his wickedness could grow, could be strengthened because of this puzzle. And a person like that would not wait, would not be interested to hear the response that we would give to Nizkar Lael, as it was mentioned above, that if this question is ever asked about Nasa, Adam, we can say, look at the next puzzle, look in other psukim and Torah, it talks about Hashem, individually creating mankind very clearly and very explicitly. But a person who already is moving in a direction of heresy, of God forbid, believing in more than one God, that person won't be interested in the answers, and they'll jump on this phrasing of Nasa Adam, and they'll draw their own conclusions. The Lachain Omar Lo, and therefore Hashem said to Moshe, Kosu, Write it the way exactly what I'm saying. Because the concern that you're raising, Moshe Rabbeinu, is not a strong enough reason to, to change to change this lesson that I wish to teach in using this Pasuk of Naseh An. And even though it's true, Hashem says, that a person who is already leaning towards uh, heretical thoughts, thoughts of Avodah Zarah, God forbid, that this person might be strengthened in his very weak and corrupted thinking, because of the Pasuk of Nase Adam, Hashem says responsibility for that is not on us, meaning on Moshe and Hashem. Hashem reassured Moshe, that's not our problem if a person who already wants to think like that uh, uses this puzzle. 
Mipnei shekvar rotsa me'atzmo litos, because this person, this individual, already wanted on his own accord to make mistakes. This person was looking for support for something that was a wicked and, and incorrect and accurate uh, and clearly refuted viewpoint. Vizehu harotze litos yite. And this is why in the Medrash Yal Kachimoni, Hashem's response is a person who wants to make a mistake will make a mistake. Meaning, Hashem didn't say, it doesn't matter to me that people might make this mistake. Hashem said, write to Moshe, write what I'm telling you, and people who already are looking for reasons to try and uh, believe in Avodah Zarah, then, then yes, you're right, they might make mistakes, but that's not Hashem's concern. That concern doesn't over, um, uh, outweigh the lesson that Hashem wished to teach with, his, with that puzzle. And this is similar to what the Medrash Shmuel explained in the first parak of Meseches Avos. Uh, over there in that, in the 11th uh, Mishnah and the first parak of Avos, uh, Avtalion teaches that he says, Chachomim his hero bidivreichem, all Chachomim should be extremely careful with their words. Because if they say certain things, certain if they phrase themselves in certain ways, then they could end up being punished. And not only that, their Talmudim could learn from them, and things could go in a in a in a bad uh, direction. And so, therefore, in, on that mission, the Medrash Shmuel explains a lesson similar to what we're talking about, which is the idea that the Zer Shimshon developed that we are always concerned about what sincere uh, B'nai Torah might uh, hear and might deduce from something, but we're not concerned about people who already have heretical thoughts or people who are already looking for excuses to do the wrong thing. We're not concerned uh, about what they may think uh, from the way we phrase things. Ukimo, going to the top of the next column. Ukimo shekosov lekomon beparshas vayishla. And similar uh, to this is what we wrote, meaning what the Zer Shimshon himself writes in Parshas vayishla. I'll call Hakore la Avraham Avraham, the Hule Avram, the Hule the Ayin Shah. If we look, jumping ahead to Parshas Vayishlach, if we were to look there in Oz Ches, we would see that the Zer Shimshon discusses an issue based on a Gemar Mesaf the Brachos about the fact that the Torah says after Avraham had his, cha- his name changed from Avram to Avraham, uh, it is no longer, it was no longer appropriate to call him Avram. He was only, could only be called Avraham. However, the Gemara says, what about Yaakov Avinu? After Yaakov Avinu's name was changed to Yisrael, uh, he was still called Yaakov. So the Gemara answers that that Yaakov's case is different because Hashem himself, the Torah him, itself, refers to Yaakov Avinu as Yaakov several times, many times after his name was changed. And so the Torah teaches that his uh, Yaakov uh, can continue to be referred to with two names, Yaakov, his given name at birth, and also Yisrael, the name that was given to him by Hashem. And so that was appropriate. However, in the case of Avraham, uh, once his name was changed to Avraham, we see that it's, it was uh, always used, Avraham was always used and not Avraham. So over there, the Zer Shimshon uh, discusses the fact that uh, Yaakov's uh, name and the fact that it, w- that it was uh, used, even though one might think that it could mean Yaakov as a trickster, as a deceiver, as it looks like from certain Sukkim, Esav referred to him, uh, to Yaakov and said, that's why his name is Yaakov, because he tricked me two times. So the Zer Shimshon again develops the point there that the Torah is not concerned with Rishoyim uh, might deduce and, and what they might think from a certain phenomenon in the Torah, from a certain language or phraseology in the Torah. The Torah is only focused on what sincere people who want to know the MS and who want to know exactly what Hashem really means in the Torah. That's what the, that's what the, they're concerned about. So so therefore, Yaakov continued to have be called Yaakov, even though some people might have used that in a denigrating or, or critical way. Uh, Yashar to everyone. Tonight's a little shorter uh, than usual. I apologize for that, uh, but I wanted to make sure to get in uh, that we could all learn a little of uh, Sefer Bereshit, something on the Parsha this week.